let me introduce you to the one and only iconic 777-300. And today I want to talk about the engines that are equipped on it. The GE90 115B. We're going to do a deep dive today and take a look at this engine from the inside out. Looking at various components and some specs on this amazing engine. So bear with me, it's going to be a bit of a long video. The G90 is a high bypass engine, two shaft turbofan, low pressure rotor system N1, high pressure rotor system N2. It has a bypass ratio of nine to one. It is massive. Unrated, this engine was actually able to produce 127,000 pounds of thrust. It won the Guinness World Book of Records. Let's begin from the fan. The cone you see is called the spinner with the little swirly white thing on it. That's there to let us know when the engine is spinning. I placed the mat in the intake right there so we can step inside and take a look at these 22 wide cord fan blades. The fan blades are carbon fiber and resin with titanium leading edge and trailing edge. Take note of the unique design of the airfoil of the blades. They create peak efficiency when it comes down to this engine running and producing massive amount of thrust. Now let's open this engine up. I want to show you what it looks like inside. What my partner over here is doing is utilizing a PDOS system. Because these fan cowls and core cowls are so heavy, the PDOS power door opening system is used. It uses hydraulic power to open the fan cowls and thrust reversers. Once fully up, it will self-lock. When we want to close it, we have to manually unlock the latches and then it'll come down. Once again, utilizing the PDOS system. The switches permit 28 volts of DC power and then it goes to a power pump. The power pump or the power pack will get 115 VAC from the aircraft itself. As you can see, the thrust reversers or the core cowlings, same way, we just pop them open. Before we do all this, there are various amounts of latches that actually hold these things together. I'll show them to you later on. They have to be done in a very particular sequence. Just as a side note, uh, in case the PDOS system does fail or is malfunctioning, we still can operate and open up these fan cowls and core cowls manually. But trust me, we really don't want to do that. These things are super heavy. All right, now we're opened up. Let's take a peek inside. All the silver you see on the side right there, that's heat shielding. The core of this engine gets very hot. Let's begin on the right side. The first thing that you see right there, that's the HMU. Hydromechanical unit. Very important unit. It's basically metering all the fuel that the engine gets. Right above it is the main fuel pump. Let me explain how this works. The main fuel pump pressurizes and cleans the fuel because it has a massive filter on it, as you saw. The pump supplies fuel to the HMU and to the fuel heater units. The HMU then sends the metered fuel to the fuel flow transmitters, after which it is sent to the fuel manifold itself, which is connected to the nozzles. This engine has 30 fuel nozzles. The HMU is also responsible for controlling turbine clearance control valves, as well as the VSV actuators, which is the variable stator vane actuator. It's a very complex unit. But moving forward, next up, we will see the starter, the air starter. This is how the engine starts. Pneumatic pressure, or basically air, coming from the APU, auxiliary power unit, will supply air to the starter in order to turn this engine. One thing I forgot to tell you is all of these things are connected to the gearbox. A quick look at the IDG, the integrated drive generator. This is the component that provides power to the aircraft. And right next to it is the backup generator right there. More commonly known as the bug. This is why I say redundancy at its finest. Right above it, you'll notice a big unit. That is the hydraulic pump, or the EDP engine driven pump that oddly shaped component right there that is the idg air oil cooler it's basically a big radiator there are various amounts of bleed valves as well i apologize i couldn't reach up there to show you in detail but that unit you're about to see that is the hpt acc high pressure turbine active clearance control and right below it was the vsv actuator they also have one for the low pressure turbine clearance control. These things basically permit cool air to blow over the cases. The cooling effect on the cases makes the temperature go up or down to make sure the turbine blade tips are not touching the case. The massive ducting that you're seeing right there, that's going from the pylon and going to the starter. Up next, you see these little wires. This is your fire loop. It's an overheat detection system. In case there's a ruptured duct or a fire within the engine, these little wires will detect it and send notification to the flight deck. All right, up next, we have the ignition system. 
You see those massive lines and this big box? Well, that's the exciter box. This creates massive amount of voltage and sends it through those shielded wires right there, or those cables that go into the combustion section. These are your igniter plugs. Forgive me if I'm bouncing around here. I'm just trying to show you the whole engine. This is also part of the active clearance control. You see the, all that shielding and the piping that's going through it. Yep, that's how it cools down. I'm trying to condense as much information as possible. It, there's a lot behind this engine. I'm just trying to give you the basics. Remember when I talked about the fuel manifold? Right there. There it is, those little pipes. They're all around the engine. They encompass the whole engine. And those pipes feed into the 30 fuel nozzles. I tell you what, sometimes when changing those, it is not easy. Very confined space. Moving forward onto the fan case, and we look up, we see this big unit. Guess what? That is the oil tank. You guys have seen me service oil many times, and this is what the whole tank looks like. The capacity is 26.5 liters. Moving towards the bottom of the engine right here, you'll see various amount of oil and hydraulic lines, as well as electrical lines. Everything neatly tucked away and well organized. And these series of pipes right here are for the drain mast. This is if any kind of leakage internally from some of these components, as you see that's written on the drain mast itself, it can go overboard. Right behind it, you'll also see two little ports. These are servicing ports for the IDG and the backup generator. You'll also notice a lot more fire loop detection components right here. They are all over the engine. In the fan case, the core, and the pylon. And last but not least, let's look up at the brains of the operation itself, the EEC, the electronic engine control. All those components I showed you all talk to that unit. One thing I didn't show over here, this engine actually has an alternator. In case all power does go out, guess what? This engine will keep on running. It can produce its own power. Moving on to the cowlings themselves, this is the core cowling. And as I mentioned earlier, you see the various amount of latches that hold this thing together. A nice look at the exhaust cone right there. The tube at the back right there is a center vent tube. The debris monitoring system, air and oil separator, removes any kind of air from the scavenge oil. And this air that's collected inside the oil tank goes overboard through that center vent tube. Continuing with our tour, we're taking a look at all the various latches once again. As you can see, many of them, and as I've said earlier, they have to be closed in sequence. Let's take a peek at the blocker doors. This is the thrust reverser half. And as you can see, those doors are the ones that actually pop open. This particular type of thrust reverser is called a cascading style. Those doors will pop up and they will move the air back. So this will help the aircraft slow down. This whole unit moves backwards right here, this big sleeve. A little fun fact for you as well. Did you know that aircraft actually don't need thrust reversers to stop? The brakes are powerful enough to stop the aircraft. As I said, there's a lot that goes on within this engine and I can only fit so much. As we slowly start to wrap up, we close the engine once again using the PDOS system and go through the sequence of events on to latching the engine properly. One thing I find amazing about these engines is that they are incredibly durable. They are constantly running, especially when they're flying long haul flights. That's what it's designed to do. Los Angeles to Heathrow to Sydney, and back again. They keep on running. But it's not all about the design, it's also about the proper maintenance. This is where you have incredible individuals doing incredible work. Consistently maintaining these big aircraft, making sure you are safe to fly. Paying attention to the details, as well as following strict guidelines and manuals. It is a tremendous pleasure for me when I work on these engines, especially standing next to them. Always a humbling feeling standing in front of a G90. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief tour. I know there's, again, a lot of things that I did not talk about here, but feel free to ask questions. I'll be here to help. Thank you and take care.